everybody. So today I am going to show something that I've been really, really, really excited about. It is Amazon on, uh, or Kubernetes rather, on Amazon. Um, if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, it's like a layer on top of Docker. It's sort of adjacent to Docker Compose or Docker Swarm. It's not a layer on top of those things. It's kind of its own separate thing, but it gives you a whole lot of coolness that Docker Compose and Docker Swarm don't quite give you and it seems like the community is really moving in that direction and there are a lot of cool things coming up for Kubernetes. So I've been pretty excited to go and to try it out and to have everything kind of like configured for me and I was sure that the Amazon solution for this was going to be really, really cool. You can find out more about it um, if you just like Google Amazon EKS, you can find it and it's right here and you can see like, I don't know, there's, there's all kinds of fun stuff. You can scale. Um, it may or may not be optimized for cost. No, I'm sure it's optimized for cost. There's a jobs API, which I'm really, I don't know anything about it yet, but I'm really interested in looking in it because I run a lot of, um, like I run like a lot of things that have a lot of tasks like scientific workflows. So I'm pretty interested in that. Um, you can see it's already got lots and lots of stuff happening. So I got started and I am gonna show you what that was about. Okay, so now let's get started. All right, so I have a really quick README. It is basically the same thing as the official documentation, but I like, um, I don't know, I like just kind of making my own resources because I find it really helps me to learn things. So the very first thing that I wanna say is a very big shout out to the team behind this tool. I have no idea how to say it. I don't know if it's EKS CTL. I don't know if it's something that like I'm supposed to be saying, but you know what, I don't care, it's awesome, it's great. I'm gonna go very quickly over to the website. Um, I don't know, they have like this cute little icon, which is pretty fun. And basically it's it's like a wrapper around cloud formation for creating um, Kubernetes clusters, which is very, very neat. So the first time that I went through this getting started documentation with AWS, it was not anywhere near as easy and straightforward as it is now. It was like, copy this cloud formation template and copy this one and then copy this other one. And it felt very, very confusing. Whereas um, this, like this just felt so much easier. So we're gonna go over here to this um, getting started guide. So this is the, you know, AWS documentation, Amazon EKS user guide, and then getting started with Amazon EKS. And you actually have two different options. You could get started with the console or you could get started with this EKS CTL. I hope I'm saying that right, but, um, but you know, whatever, it's fine. So, um, so like I said, we're gonna get started. So the very first thing that it does is it walks you through lots and lots and lots of installation instructions. Um, this part is pretty important. If you haven't done this already, make sure you do this. Make sure that you're using a user that has admin credentials, you might also need to specifically give it the anything with an EKS role, like EKS admin kind of privileges. And, um, you know, again, again, install, 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 install more things. Okay, this is where things get interesting. So before I go over that, uh, so I've actually created a Docker image that has all of these installation instructions because I figured I would just, I would break something somewhere on my computer if I tried to do all that. I try not to have too much stuff installed just like on my computer, especially these CLI tools that they tend to be upgraded like very quickly and they tend to change a lot. So I just, I like to have them in a Docker container. It's right here. I'm going to give the link uh, in the notes on how you too can get the Docker container, right? So it's not... It's not too complicated. It's pretty much exactly what was happening over here or up here rather. Just, um, I don't know, less stuff, less stuff. So, but it's also nice because, you know, as usual, I can have somebody else that I know get started on Amazon EKS without having to go through this, this whole thing here. Okay, so now do you have that? Oh, and I added two other things. I added um, this compose tool, 
that transforms Docker Compose files into Kubernetes like services and controllers, which is really cool. There is like one little trick to that that hopefully I'll get to show. Um, and then I kind of tried to get started with some more of these tools like Helm and Tiller. I'm not totally familiar with them, so they're on there, but like I specifically don't know how to use them, so I'm not gonna go over them today. And then the very last thing that happens is that I do make this directory um, root.aws, and you are gonna have to get your credentials into this image somehow. I just have mine in the same directory, uh, which you, know, you may or may not wanna do, I don't know. And then I have And then I have a run docker script that just says run and does a file mount from my current working directory to root.aws. Um, I named this image aws-eks and then I just run it. Well, I'll just show you that quickly too. So I just, I find that it's very helpful to have, um, to have all these because it's just less stuff to remember. So I always, you know, I almost always have a build Docker, run Docker, sometimes I have a deploy Docker if it's specifically a Docker image that I want to deploy. So, you know, I have these, they're here, I can run them. Uh, so now that I have those, let's get started. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this run Docker. Okay, and I have that, and now that I have that, oh, look at this, I am going to create my cluster. Oh, I'm not going to create my cluster. I don't know. Am I? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. I have to go back to the code view. That's okay, though. Man, what is, what is happening? There we go. Okay. Sorry. That took me a few minutes. Okay, so you see, see, look, see, look at this awesomeness. Like this is great. It has the the zones, and it gives you all this pretty colored output, and it tells you that it's doing all these awesome things, and it's making me all these nice clusters, and this is great. So what this is is this is this EKSCTL create cluster. I give it a name. I tell it a version. Um, I think this is actually the version of EKS, not the version of this tool, but I'm, I'm not totally sure. I have this node group name, standard workers, um, the node type, the number of nodes I want to start off with, the minimum number of nodes to maintain, the maximum number of nodes, and then uh, which Amy or AMI to use underneath that, which can just be chosen for you automatically. So this here, this, <clears throat> sorry, this here, this is going to take a little while. To, it's going to take like 10 to 15 minutes, which is so, so hard for the people like me who aren't patient. But it's just the way that the world works. So here we go. And I'm going to let this spin up. And then I will be back when it's all done. Okay, and now we're back. So you can see that my stack was created. So I ran, um, I ran this command. It sets the availability zones. It sets all kinds of great stuff that I don't have to set. So that's amazing. Uh, you see, it's all nice and blue, which is good. I imagine if there was something like red or orange or something, that would be less good. Okay, so now, the t so now our tutorial cluster is ready. Before I get into that though, I want to just kind of go over something quickly. So I kind of glossed over um, the node types and the node size and all that. And one of the really cool things about, you know, this functionality is that it does support GPU nodes. So um, if you look in the EKS CTL documentation, you can see that in the create cluster, they have a node type and you can choose one of the P2 nodes, which is, um, which is one of the GPU nodes. So you'll be all set there. You have to be subscribed to something, I think. Yeah, EKS optimized Amy's with GPU support. So make sure that you're subscribed to this. And then um, make sure that you run this command afterwards, which is just going to run the NVIDIA or apply the NVIDIA device. So, um, you know, so that's it. So it does show you like there's, you know, there's a ton of really good stuff here on in terms of customization and different things that you can do. I'm just going through the AWS quick start tutorial. And then I did want to show you if you go. Um, 
So if you go to this getting started with uh, Amazon EKS, I'm doing this getting started with EKS CTL, but you can also do the getting started with the console, which is gonna take you through like step-by-step -step how you would do this in the console. So then you can see the different cloud formations and all the different things. But again, this is the one I'm going through. So then all the way at the bottom here, I'm going, I'm going to go through this launch a guest book application next. Okay. And so we have, um, we have several commands. This is just kind of a basic web service. There's, um, there's like a Redis data store in memory, and then there's a web application written in go. And in a minute, I am just going to show something with this one. So I just want to have that ready. Okay. So um, just to make sure that this all worked, can I do that? Is that going to work? No. Oh, there it is. That's fine. Okay. So you should be able to run this kubectl get svc. And, um, and then you'll get that you do have a cluster, cluster down here. So that's good. That's what we expect to see. Um, for a while, like the first time I tried to go through this, I didn't have my user permission set up correctly. And I got some really weird error. I can't remember what it was now, but if you get an error with this, it might be your user permission. So check that out. And then I'm going to go through and I'm just going to kind of one-stop shop, apply all of these commands. And they're gonna go through, hopefully. Yep, see, there we go, they're going. So they're not quite instant. I said that they were instant, they're not quite instant. Okay, so we applied, um, we applied all the Kubernetes configurations, they were here. And now I'm going to say, okay, actually, oops, actually get me, get me the services. Okay, fine. I'll just type it. Okay. And then you can see here that we actually have an IP address. Okay. It comes in right here and it's being served on port 3000. So I think this takes like maybe a couple minutes to populate, but I'm going to try it anyways. Okay. So this site can't be reached. It should come up pretty soon. So I think it does take a few minutes. Um, cause you can see guestbook and here's the load balancer and it has an IP address. And then the rest of these are, I guess, just, just worker nodes that aren't exposed to any kind of web service. So um, one thing to note is that if you use the compose to uh, to translate your Docker compose files to Kubernetes services and controllers, one thing is that the syntax for the specification port is a little bit different because you have this ports um, 3000 HTTP server, and then that's how the load balancing happens and that's how you get you get it served to the outside. I forget exactly what the syntax is otherwise, but it is it's a little bit different, so that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I oh there we go. And now it's up. So I'm gonna put my name. Look, and now I'm in the guest book and now I'm gonna put my kids' names. Rowan and Lena, we're all going for a wonderful beach vacation someplace. I don't know where, but we're going to go someplace. Okay. So that's it. You can see this spun up after a few minutes and it was here and it was all good. Um, I am going to take this down now for a while. I was leaving up all my Amazon instances, but that got to be a bit of an expensive hobby for me. So I am no longer doing that. And also I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to delete the cluster. You could also, I mean, I could have deleted all the services first. I didn't do that. I'm just deleting the cluster. And then, you know, it will delete everything because the cluster will be deleted. If you wanted to just delete the services, you could do it like this. 
Okay, so that's it. Um, I hope you saw this and saw how easy it was to get started. And you can go and deploy all of your own things in Kubernetes on AWS. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.